I'm so thankful y'all are here today. Um, you know, the Lord does not have you here by accident. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. And today, if you will, turn your Bible with me to 2 Samuel chapter 23. I want to talk to you today about being strong in the Spirit. Being strong in the Spirit. On Monday, October the 15th, 2012, at 1 a.m., I was woken up by my wife basically yelling at me. Okay, man, have you all ever had that happen? Right. But no, 1 a.m. in the morning, I was woken up by my wife yelling at me. And I'm not a, I sleep deep, so it takes a little while for me to wake up. But she kept on hollering my name. I could hear her and call her my name, Cody, Cody, Cody. And finally, I came up to, to enough to where I was like, what, what, what is it? What's going on? And she said, my water broke. We have to go to the hospital right now. Now, this was our first child, uh, Ephraim, and I tell you what, adrenaline kicked in, but fear kicked in as well. That was probably the scariest morning I've ever faced in my life. To become a father was frightening to me. Because of the questions, what if I mess up? God, you've really given me this child to raise. What if I teach him something wrong? What if I don't live up? to the expectations that they have for me, it was frightening to me. Man, anyone else there with me on that? It's frightening. And as I drove an hour to the hospital through the middle of the night, that October morning, the Lord kept on telling me, just be strong in the Spirit. Be strong in the Spirit. Basically, don't focus on your flesh, but rather... Focus on the spirit that lives within you. Be strong. Friends, today we all fear things in life. But one thing I know is that the Lord tells us to not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, friends, when God says, surely I will, you can take that to the bank. You know that God is going to hold you up strongly. So this morning in 2 Samuel 23, we're going to take a look at a gentleman that you may or may not have heard of. He's not mentioned very much throughout Scripture, but he shows us how to be fearless when we face the lion's in our lives. So if you will, in 2 Samuel 23, beginning with verse 20, it says, Then Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done great deeds, killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, an impressive man. Now the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, But he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah the son of Jehoiada did and had a name as well as the three mighty men. He was honored among the 30, but he did not attain the reputation of the three. And David appointed him over his bodyguard. Now you may be like, Brother Cody, what in the world are we looking at this for? What does this have to do with our own lives? I'm so thankful you asked, because we know everything in Scripture is there for rebuke, for teaching, and we can gain from it. Well, today I believe the Lord's Word for us is this. First of all, that problems prepare you for future opportunities. Problems prepare you for future opportunities. You know, we all go through problems. But Nahum saw a few problems in his life. He took down some valiant warriors. He killed this person and that person. But the one verse that gets me is the verse about where he goes down and kills a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day. You might ask, why in the world did the author write that down? That's pretty detailed. Think about it. Going down into a pit with a lion. Listen, 
Benaiah did not have to do that. Okay, reading this text, it sounds like the lion was already in that pit that he had fought, and he could have walked away. But he chose not to. He chose on that snowy day, the day where you don't have much traction, the, the climate's not the best, to jump in and face this lion, having faith that God is going to see him through it. And this morning, friends, I know that we all are facing some type of lion in our life. But I want you to hear this. We, we, we often ask the question, why? Has anyone asked that? Why did this have to happen? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening or why is that happening? Why didn't this happen instead? God has a plan for your life. And he sees you every step of the way through those things. 2 Corinthians 1.4 says, he comforts us, or who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Basically, what this is saying is that when you go through something and God supplies you with the comfort, with the peace, with the strength, whenever you get through that, you're able to help other people and show them the strength that they can have through the Lord, the comfort that you can receive, the strength that you can receive. Because we know Jeremiah 29, 11 teaches us, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Friends, there was a time in my life where I went through a struggle. I was actually in college at Oklahoma Baptist University studying to be a minister. And I went through this dark, this dark time because one January, there were so many tragedies around me. People dying, this happening, that happening. And I finally came to a conclusion that it felt like I was an ant on an anthill and God was the kid with a magnifying glass trying to burn my antennas off. Okay? That was the mindset I was in. But that was so inaccurate. And God had to show me that he had a plan for my life, a welfare, a future, and a hope. He wasn't bringing me into a storm just to drop me and to let me die there. No, he brought me through it to strengthen me. Not in my flesh, but in the spirit of God. So friends, what we face today, our problems prepare you for future opportunities. As we look here at Benaiah, you know, the last thing that I believe was on his mind when he jumped into that pit with that lion on that snowy day, he wasn't thinking, you know what, this is going to look great on my resume. Okay? That, that wasn't what it was on his mind, was it? But as we see in this story, King David appointed him over his bodyguard. So he received a wonderful promotion. He received a wonderful position with King David being over his bodyguard because of this story, because he showed his strength and his fearlessness. And friends, we're called to be fearless. We're called to be strong in the Spirit of God knowing that the problems we face are preparing you for future opportunities. So instead of asking the question of why is this happening, ask yourself, ask, ask the Lord instead, Lord, show me how you will use this in the future. Show me how I can be a help to someone else. Now, if we've had a spouse that has passed away, we can help others who are facing the same. If you've battled and struggle with cancer, you can help others who are going through the same. Friends, we are called to help others who are going through similar storms in life. Let me tell you, the Apostle Paul also wrote that our struggles prove little compared to the glory that we will experience in heaven. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. 
So although we may struggle here, no, it's, compar- it's not in comparison to what glory we'll receive in heaven. Amen? And secondly, I want us to see that we must have faith over fear. Benaiah showed no fear when facing his opponent in this lion. No, several years ago, I was looking at Christian songs on the radio. And even today, I did a Google search. You realize that there's over 20 Christian songs that talk about fear. Fear is something that everyone's talking about today. I believe three years ago when COVID hit, it really caused people to start fearing what was going on really focusing on their fear. Just like the enemy wanted us to, he wanted us to focus on fear rather than on having faith. Friends, our fears are driven by external information. I once heard that fear could be an acronym for false evidence appearing real. To have faith over fear, we must stop listening to the lies. We must stop listening to the lies of the devil the lies of the enemy. Friends, our God is not a God of fear. He does not want to emplace fear in your life. Now let me highlight this. He calls us to fear him, which is respect and adoration, okay? But he is not going to put fear in your heart of things around you. But rather, he's going to provide you peace in your heart. So how do we do this? How do we get faith over fear? Again, I mentioned we got to stop listening to the lies. Friends, there's two parts of learning. The first part is learning new information. The second part of that is unlearning old information. i tell you what, that's difficult, isn't it? Y'all have all heard the, the, the phrase, what is it? It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Hey, th- th- this is part of that. You know, when Jesus encountered this, if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, you'll see Jesus teaching in this way. You have heard that it was said. And then Jesus goes on to say, but I tell you. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. You've heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Friends, Jesus, in his teachings, was uninstalling Old Testament concepts and installing New Testament truths. He came to fulfill the law. Mark Batterson once quoted, faith is unlearning the senseless worries and misguided beliefs that keep us captive. Our fears are rooted in lies that we've been taught. Now, there was a study several years ago about what people fear the most. What people fear the most. The number one fear was the fear of public speaking. Number two, okay, this is for the world, not for the church, but for the world. The number two fear was death. So honestly, someone would rather be in the casket than the one given the eulogy at the funeral. <laughs> Think about it. But I know as believers, we're not afraid to be in that casket, are we? We know where, the, where we're going to be. But friends, we must unlearn our fears because We're only born with two fears, according to psychiatrists. We're born with the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Everything else is learned. That means if it's learned, you can unlearn it. So whether it's arachnophobia or afraid of spiders or you're afraid of clowns or you're afraid of closed in spaces or afraid of going too fast on the highway or whatever your fear is, know that it can be unlearned. And friends, when we really look at fears and what we're afraid of, I mentioned at the beginning, I was afraid to become a father. 
And honestly, if I get down to the nitty gritty of it, I probably still am afraid of messing up as a dad. But what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of a relationship in your life? Maybe it's health concerns. Maybe you're afraid of having faith. That sounds like an oxymoron, but think about it. You're afraid of letting go. You're afraid of letting go of that fear. Friends, God has broken the chains in your life of sin. And when that happens, there is nothing to fear. Whatever you fear, don't let it control your life. We must face our lions in our life. One thing I've seen in many Christians' lives, one thing that maybe people are afraid of, that they fear, is the fear of not being able to do what God's called them to do. Because they're so focused on carrying the weight on their own shoulders. Friends, your success as a believer is not based on how much you can carry on your own shoulders. It's based upon how bruised up your knees are from kneeling at the feet of Jesus. That's what your success is based upon. So when we pray, are we praying that we will have faith over fear? Are we putting everything at the feet of Jesus? So I know if we took a poll in here today, we all have our fears. You're afraid of something today that you need to lay at the feet of Jesus. Because he's there wanting to take it off of you. He's there waiting to pick you up. So friends, problems prepare you for future opportunities. We must have faith over fear. And lastly, and I tell you, this is exciting. So I hope you're still awake right now, okay? Because you're going to want to hear this. That you have a spirit of power not a fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. That is the spirit of God. That is the Holy Spirit in your life. So when you call upon the name of God and you are rescued from your sin and you are saved... You receive the Holy Spirit. Please do not undermine the Spirit of God in your life. Say no to the flesh and say yes to God and the Spirit that's in you. We must learn to live through the Spirit. You know, we pray, God, Father, fill me with your Spirit. Fill me with your strength. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your comfort. And do not let me fear what I face today, what I'll face tomorrow. Friends, today is the day to be the person you're supposed to be. It's time to stand up and to do what is right. Time to live in the Spirit, to be strong in the Lord. Today is the day to be the child of God you're called to be. Friends, if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, I want you to hear this. If you have the Holy Spirit in your life, that means you have Jesus living in you. The same Spirit of God has been in battle many times. The Spirit of God that shook the mountains that turned the river to blood. The Spirit of God that healed the leper, gave sight to the blind and made the slain man leap. The Spirit of God that cast demons out, that poured down fire from heaven. The Spirit of God that raised Lazarus from the grave. And let's not forget the same Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave. That is the Spirit of God that's in you. 
That is the spirit of God that was given to you. The spirit of fear, or the spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And so as we go back to Benaiah for just a minute, why was he selected as the captain of the bodyguard for King David? Let me take you back to King David's life as a boy. You might remember when David was going up and the Israelites were having a tough time beating this giant named Goliath. And David thought he could take them on. He knew he could take down this, this Philistine. You remember what he told King Saul? He said, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. So think about it. When King David was looking at people to become the captain of his bodyguard, who was he looking for? He was looking for someone that would face the lion just as he did. He was looking for someone that would take his bare hands and break the lion's neck. He was looking for someone that was not afraid or fearful of anything. In Urbanea. He saw this man, he was looking through all these resumes and got to him, and I'm sure he thought, wow, not only did he kill a lion, he did it on a snowy day. He's got one up on me. King David wanted someone protecting him as valiant, as fearless as he was. And friends, today, Jesus has called you. He has saved you. He has rescued you. He has given you the Holy Spirit so that you may be strong and fearless in the face of any storm, any line that you face head on. Today is not a day to say, you know what? It's not for me. I'm not going to do that. Maybe you're afraid of walking across your street and sharing the Lord's Word with someone that you know needs to hear it. Just like we sang, I'm going to go tell the world. Are you afraid of doing that? Friends, the Lord has given you the Holy Spirit to go and tell the world. He's called you to live through the Holy Spirit to do just that. So this morning, as you think about your fears, about what's happening in your life, Maybe you have something going on. Maybe you just received some information, some news that you don't really like. Remember, it's not about living in the flesh and thinking, oh, how, how am I going to get through this? It's about how is the Lord going to help you get through it? It's how am I going to live through the Spirit? So friends, get in the Word of God. Get in the Word of God. The Word tells us that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. What you put in is what you're going to get out. So if you're watching the news, if you're listening to the radio all the time and hearing all the bad things happening in the world, and that's all you're putting in, obviously what you're going to get out is fear and anxiety. You need to put some truth in your life. You need to put some hope into your life. You need to put some encouragement into your life. Turn on the Christian radio station and listen to some great encouraging song about Jesus. Open the scriptures and read it. Dive into God's word. Because when you put this in your life, what you're going to get out is peace, comfort, and strength. So if you're anxious about something today, friends, if you're, if you're afraid, let me tell you, you're, you're not alone, okay? If you're watching online today or a week from right now when this is being preached, 
Listen, you're not alone in this, but God can help you. God will reach out and encourage you. That Holy Spirit in your life will provide you the peace that you need. And better yet, I believe that when you pray, God's going to put someone else in your life that's been through the same struggle that you have to help you through it. Or he's going to put you in someone else's life to encourage them, to spur them on, to keep them going. The church, today I pray that you won't, that, that when you leave here, that you will not walk out afraid. This world's not getting better. It's going to continue to get worse. And many things are going to come our way that we could be afraid of. But the Lord tells us to not fear, for he is with us, and he's going to hold you up. The Lord tells us not to be anxious, but rather by prayer and supplication, make your request made known to God in the peace of all that surpasses all understanding will come into your heart. So friend, won't you be fearless like Benaiah? Won't you face these lions in your life knowing that God is with you? Friends, the Lord is wanting to hold you up today. We're about to open up our invitation time and my prayer today is that what you're fearing today, you won't leave here with it on your shoulders. That you'll come, bring it forward, and lay it at the feet of God. Asking Him to fill you with that Holy Spirit. Asking Him to help you to understand that you need to leave the flesh behind and turn and focus and live only through that Spirit. The Spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Church, if you will, pray with me now. Father God, we thank you. Lord, for your word. And I know, Father, today that there's someone in here that has a fear. They're going through something, Father, that they're afraid of. Lord, they may receive some bad news. They may be facing an operation. Maybe it's a relationship. But whatever it is, my prayer is that today, that, Lord, that they'll lay it at your feet. Lord, help them to understand that you have broken those chains and they're able to do and, and lay, Lord, those struggles at your feet today. Father, if one in here does not know you yet and they're still bound by the chains of sin, I ask and pray that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, that they'll come forward professing you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, receiving the Holy Spirit, Lord, receiving the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Lord, you are incredible, you are strong, you are mighty, you are righteous. And Father, as we bow our heads before you, as we kneel before you and we raise our hands, Lord, that is when we are strengthened beyond measure by living through your Spirit. For you will give us nothing that we can't overcome with the Spirit you have blessed us with. So Lord, we know you're doing a great work in here. Lord, continue to work all things for the good. Continue to do your work. And Father, today I pray now that you will help us live through your spirit. Lord, we pray all this in the precious son's name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. If you would, please stand. The invitation is now open. Won't you listen to what the Lord is speaking to you today?